Hey folks, Stephen here from Moving to Canada, and yep, we are on a boat. Yes, we are currently sailing across the Strait of Georgia and we're on our way to Vancouver Island and the capital of British Columbia, Victoria. What's that? You thought that Vancouver City was the capital of British Columbia? Well, it sounds to me like you need to know these eight things before moving to Victoria. So come with us as we explore Vancouver Island and give you a little taste of why you might want to consider life as an islander. Here we are in Victoria, the capital of Vancouver Island and the whole of British Columbia. This picturesque little city has a population of about 100,000 people. And if you're thinking about moving to Victoria, the first thing you should consider is that it's located on an island, Vancouver Island. Whoa, 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 whoa. quick aside before we get into that. Just know that the city of Vancouver isn't actually located on Vancouver Island. It's actually on the mainland, just here. Confusing, eh? Thanks, Canada. Okay. Let's get back to the island. Vancouver Island hugs the southwestern coast of BC, jutting out into the Pacific Ocean. The island is pretty big. It takes about six hours to drive from the top to the bottom, although it might take you longer because you're going to want to stop at some of the incredible destinations along the way. The island is known for its natural beauty, from Tofino, where you can find some of the best surfing in Canada, to the rainforests of Pacific Rim National Park. Vancouver Island is a gem. The city of Victoria is located at the southernmost tip of Vancouver Island. It's pretty much as far south as you can go in British Columbia, right across the strait from the United States, actually. It's important to understand if you're moving to Victoria that you'll need to grab yourself a ferry or flight to get to the mainland. The most popular option is the ferry from Vancouver, well, to Swanson technically, where a walk-on passenger without a car can grab a one-way ticket for about 20 bucks. But if you're bringing a car with multiple passengers, a return ferry can cost upwards of $200. There's also the ferry from Victoria to Port Angeles in Washington State, and the Clipper, which will take you to and from Seattle. Now, aside from Victoria, you can also nab yourself a ferry to places like Nanaimo, Comox, Campbell River, and Port Hardy. So now that we know where we're going, let's chat a little bit about housing. Victoria may not be as expensive as its costly neighbor, Vancouver, but renting in the city certainly isn't cheap. According to the website Numbeo, in May 2022, a one bedroom apartment in Victoria city centre cost around 18.50 per month. Outside the city centre, you might be able to snag something for around 15.50 per month. But a three bedroom apartment in the city centre will set you back upwards of 3,300 per month. While again, outside the city centre, somewhere around 2,700 per month. All of this, of course, will depend on what location you ultimately want to live in. Now, if you want to buy property in Victoria, you should know that the average residential home costs over a million dollars. In fact, this creepy house behind me, which is definitely haunted, went viral after it sold for over $800,000. So I guess you should just lay off the avocado toast. If you're looking for a cheaper area, you might want to look at the smaller towns and cities on Vancouver Island. Rental prices in Nanaimo, for example, are about 20% cheaper than Victoria, while Campbell River, about 15%. So you definitely have options. So yes, Vancouver Island is an island, but don't let that fool you, it's still pretty big, so we need to know how to get around. If you want to see more of the island while you're here, a car is definitely advisable. Although, historically, gas prices tend to be a little bit pricier on the island than they are on the mainland. But if you're sticking around Victoria, maybe you don't have to worry about that, as walking and biking can be a great way to get around your neighbourhood and even the surrounding neighbourhoods. After that, if you're looking to get around the city without the physical exertion, you can always hop on one of the many buses offered by BC Transit. Bus fares come in at a fairly respectable $2.50 for an adult or $85 for a monthly pass. Now, if you're feeling a little bit fancier, you could always take the sea taxi through Victoria Harbour Ferry. A regular adult fare within zone one of the sea taxi is around eight bucks. So maybe you won't be taking it as often as you think. Now, if you think you're gonna need a bigger boat, you're gonna need a bigger boat. BC Ferries and Victoria Harbour Ferries offer several routes connecting Victoria with other parts of Vancouver Island and of course, Vancouver City for a fun way to get around and maybe even see some whales. It'd be very cool if you actually saw some whales there. That would have been, yeah. Okay, never mind. Just before we go on to our next topic, a quick word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by our trusted partner, Cigna. Cigna provide flexible international health insurance plans that can be customizable for your individual circumstance. So get your free quote for international health insurance by clicking on the link in the description. The fourth thing you need to know if you're considering Victoria is the climate. Victoria has the mildest climate in all of Canada. If the city was a food, think plain yogurt. According to the NOAA, the daily highs in summer is about 20 degrees Celsius, while in winter, around 8 degrees, 
which, while wet and cold, rarely dips below minus two. Regional mountains also provide weather protection, which means that Victoria has the lowest recorded rainfall on the west coast. And if you're coming from Vancouver, you know that that is quite appealing. Now, if you're leaving Victoria and going more towards the west of the island, the warm air from the Pacific is forced up the island's mountain ranges, resulting in considerably more rainfall, especially during the winter months of September to March. While a trip to the east coast around Nanaimo will ensure some of the warmest temperatures recorded on the island. The fifth thing you need to know is that life on the island of Victoria isn't all hammocks and coconuts. In fact, there's no coconuts, to be honest. Victoria has a bustling economy with plenty to offer. And in recent years, remote workers have flocked to the island to get away from the stresses of mainland life. The island's economy is diverse, with tourism, forestry, and the tech industry leading the charge. In fact, in Victoria, there is 800 tech companies operating in the city with a combined annual revenue of two billion dollars. However, in recent years, the government of British Columbia have been trying to increase tourism to places like Tofino and Uslit. So between the hiking, the scuba diving, the snowboarding, the surfing, there is definitely a job for you here in the island. But all work and no play is boring, right? Well, Victoria has loads to offer in the form of bars and restaurants, which we'll be getting into a little bit later in this video, but also some amazing natural beauty just a short drive from the city centre. Most islanders would call themselves outdoorsy, choosing to live and play in the great outdoors. Which makes sense when you hear that there is 120 provincial parks on the island, oceans all around, and some amazing mountain landscapes. Like this. The tagline is beautiful BC, and there is nowhere better to see this in person than on Vancouver Island. From the countless hiking trails, to the skiing, surfing, and even dirt biking, the sixth thing you need to know about Victoria and Vancouver Island is just how accessible to nature it is. If you're planning on making the move to Victoria, you better get ready to fall in love with nature. Although, to be honest, with these views, it's not gonna be too hard. Just a short four and a half hour drive from Victoria and you'll hit Tofino on the west coast of the island, known for its excellent surfing, the best in Canada, in fact. Now, if scaling a mountain or jumping into the Pacific Ocean isn't your idea of an ideal Saturday, there is plenty of other green spaces on offer in Victoria, including the infamous Butchart Gardens a national historic site of Canada where you'll find millions of bedding plants in over 900 varieties as you wander the gardens. If you're coming for a visit, they recommend you allow at least three hours to take it all in. So, best pack a picnic. The seventh thing we want to cover today is post-secondary schooling in Victoria. Most people who think of Victoria think of UVIC, and for good reason. The University of Victoria offers over 100 comprehensive classes to 18,000 students in day, evening, and distance learning classes. Whether you're a graduate, undergraduate, seeking continued studies, cooperative education or distance learning, the University of Victoria will probably have a class for you. Unless, of course, you're a rabbit, in which case you're definitely not welcome here. The things you find out when you're researching a video, which reminds me, if you think we've missed anything or have any ideas yourself what people should do when visiting Victoria, please like this video and comment down below. Outside of UVIC, post-secondary trade and technical schools cover everything from hairdressing to business schools to even learning how to drive big rigs. In fact, the provincial government has recently announced that they'll provide funding for a new marine training centre for Camerson College. Whether you're seeking a good education for your children, looking to further your own career goals or just continue your learning journey, you will almost certainly be able to find a school and programme here for you in Victoria. Sorry, I got a lot of food in my mouth. The last thing you need to know before moving to Victoria is that there is quality food and drink options available on the island. Obviously, being an island, the seafood here is amazing. But in recent years, there has been an explosion of culinary delights that are not to be missed if you make the move across. From the Sanic Peninsula to the Cowichan Valley in the south to the Comox Valley in the north, so many products are grown on or around the island. Dairy, poultry, kiwi, even tea leaves. So if you move here, you get a chance to taste some of the freshest ingredients in the world cooked by some of the world's most renowned chefs. Just don't forget to try one of Vancouver Island's namesake dishes before you leave, the Nanaimo Bar. I was meant to get these on the island, but we couldn't find them anywhere. Everywhere was sold out, because they're obviously great. So, Nanaimo Bar. Now, before we go, we just want to remind you about our trusted partner, Cigna, that has sponsored this video. Cigna provides flexible international health insurance policies that are customizable to your personal needs. So, get your free quote for international flexible health insurance by clicking on the link in the description of this video. Rental prices in Nanaimo. 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 Rental prices in Nanaimo. Okay, 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 okay. Rental prices in
rental prices in the Nan. Nan. I. I. Mo. Nan. I. Mo. Rental prices in Nanaimo are 15% cheaper and... 20% cheaper. 20% <laughs> cheaper.